Hey guys, welcome to my channel. Today I will provide more insights on pricing and reserving because most of the actuaries are involved in these two functions. Just to clarify, whatever I mentioned in this video are in the perspective of the PNC industry. Life industry might be slightly different. This episode is a continuation of my last video. Last time I talked about the different actuarial functions where I explained what pricing, reserving, economic capital, and asset liability management are. If you haven't checked it out, you can click the link at the top right corner. First, let's recall what pricing and reserving are. Pricing is to determine the premium charged to policyholders, and reserving is to determine the reserves the companies have to hold. If we were to do a side-to-side -side comparison of pricing and reserving, pricing deals with emergent risk, whereas reserving deals with elapsed risk. Pricing happens at the very beginning of the insurance cycle, um, even before a policy is sold, whereas reserving will only come into play if an accident happens. Secondly, I think reserving work is more tangible as all the analysis results and decisions will be reflected on financial statement on a quarterly basis or get recorded in the system on a monthly basis. As a reserving actuary, you see the result of your work being reflected in some form almost immediately. While for pricing, once your rate change request was approved by the regulator, it takes a year or two for all the rate changes to be reflected, as premium will not be fully earned right away. In addition, because reserving is closely tied up with financial reporting work, it is strictly bonded by regulatory rules in terms of what needs to be shown and how things should be displayed. Reserving's timeline is also fixed, there are months and quarter end and year end where you cannot push those deadlines back. On the other hand, the required fighting for pricing is usually at most once a year, depending on the product and the province. And the rest of the time, you will be looking at different trends and reflecting the ones that are significant in the premium in your next filing. For example, recently, the high inflation is a problem need to be figured out. You might also be looking for ways to segment the book better, to price more accurately, and attract the right customers. All in all, from both timeline and content-wise, reserving work is more rigid, while pricing could be more dynamic. In terms of the specific skill needed for the position, communication skill and analytical skill are required for all actuarial positions without a doubt. What could be slightly different is that Presentation skill is necessary for reserving positions, as every quarter you have to present your analysis result to the senior management team. But that also depends. Some companies don't ask analysts to do that, but you absolutely have to once you become more senior. Pricing work tends to be more technical. It involves a lot of data work. You should be good at SAS and SQL at least, and nowadays, R and Python are being utilized at some companies. But that doesn't mean reserving is not technical. Some reserving teams use Python as well. Everything is relative. Lastly, as a pricing actuary, you tend to work more independently, but you still need to work with underwriters, especially if you're doing commercial pricing. And you also collaborate with reserving and finance. And for reserving actuaries, you collaborate with finance and claims quite often, and sometimes with pricing, economic capital, and reinsurance. One of the reasons that reserving has to communicate with many different departments is because only reserving has access to all levels of claim data that no one else has access to within the company. So yeah, that concludes my video for today. If you find it helpful, Please like and subscribe. Thank you for watching.